This weekend, I'm heading to Southeast Asia for six months. I don't actually have a plan of what I'm going to do there yet, but I do have a plan for preparing myself for this long-term travel. The following is what I call my liftoff sequence. It's the steps that I go through when I'm prepping for long-term travel like this. The first thing I do when I'm prepping for long-term travel is I get on the phone. Uh, and I, in fact, I, I call the people that I don't like. First, I call my bank. So even though it's the modern age and the scientists can split the atom and we have self-driving cars, for some reason, I still have to call my credit card company and tell them whenever I leave the United States. It's completely bizarre and irrational and antiquated, but uh, still something I have to do. So I call my credit card companies. The next thing that I do is I call my bank, uh, because even though I just use my debit card as a backup um, so that I can use the miles that I get from my credit cards, I have to tell them as well. And they're separate from the, from the credit card provider, so I have to get on the phone call and stay on hold and talk to people I really don't want to do. The next company that I call that I don't like is my phone company. So I call them and usually just cancel service. Uh, what I do when I'm abroad is I use a local SIM card and then a service like SendHub uh, so that I can make local and foreign uh, calls for like virtually nothing. Uh, I used to use Google Voice, but it's gotten pretty antiquated at this point. They, they haven't updated their service from an iOS perspective in about a year, so I'm done with them. And the last thing I do is that I pack for the trip. So I uh, just use the packing list that I've talked about before here. I'll put the video up here. Look at that, look at that guy. Yeah, uh, that's the same packing list that I use for all of my trips. Uh, so that makes it really easy. Most of the time my suitcase is actually just pre-packed. There's two tips that I want to point out uh, when, you're, when you're prepping for long-term travel like this. The first one is a concept I call the ghost day. So normally when you're leaving, you're going to run into all these errands that you need to do and all these people you got to say goodbye to and maybe last minute purchases you have to make, uh, all these kind of things. So what I've started to do, and this has been hard earned, I'll tell you, is telling everybody that I'm leaving on say um, Saturday, but not actually have my flight until Sunday. So what this enables me to do is it gives me an extra 24 hours where I can get everything else covered. It kind of it helps me keep sane and it gives me plenty of time as I make sure to say goodbye to everybody uh, without it hurting anyone's feelings. So I give myself what I call a ghost day, uh, which is a full day before I travel that is not interrupted with other meetings or other kind of things. The next thing that I do is I break my normal no hotel rule and I book a hotel for the first day, maybe two days that I'll be in a brand new country uh, for a longer term. And, and this is important for a couple of reasons. One, I found that my body just goes bizarre uh, when I go these super long flights. So the one that I'm going on this weekend is 15 hours. So I'm gonna do that, be in a country I've never been to, don't know all the details about it um, yet. So what I do is I get a hotel, so it's just really, really easy to check in, get internet access, and then find access to the food or any of the medicines that I need. Uh, so I break my normal no hotel rule and get one for the first day or two. When I'm done with all the logistics stuff, I call the people that I do like. I call my, my family first. I organize a big dinner uh, or some kind of meal so that we can get together and say goodbyes and go over any last minute things that need to be taken care of. Um, but I make sure to set aside that time on my calendar well in advance uh, to make sure that I get to see all my family before I leave. After that, I call my friends and I organize a big party. Uh, and this is, this is fun. This is something I think that my friends look forward to each time I go on one of these stupid, crazy trips. Uh, it's something I look forward to, certainly. What I used to do was just schedule lunches and dinners and breakfasts with different groups of friends or different friends. And what happened is I, that took up um, like too much time and I wasn't able to get anything done. I wasn't able to get all my work responsibilities taken care of. So what I do now is just do one big party at a local pub. And that makes things just a lot easier, I think, for everybody involved because it blocks off. I usually have the party for like six to eight hours or so, which is a long time. Uh, so people can get in and people can get out and uh, all that kind of stuff. And I don't have to worry about being at different restaurants all around town or different kind of things, spending a lot of money and spending a lot of time. This way I get to just see everybody all at once um, and everyone gets to see each other. So it works out to be a really positive event every single time I leave. The last step, as you can imagine, is actually go to the airport. So when I'm there, there's three things I'm thinking about. One, I'm starting to get adjusted to the new time zone I'm going to be in. So if it is night at that time, as soon as I get on the plane, I do everything I can to go to sleep. Uh, so I don't usually take sleeping drugs, although I'm not against them. A lot of people like melatonin or uh, Ambien if you get a prescription. Uh, I, I can just fall asleep on airplanes, so I, I generally do that. Uh, if I have to stay awake because, let's say, it's the afternoon uh, at, of the time of my destination, then I'll, I'll just get lots of things to walk, either work on or things to watch, uh, particularly like downloading a bunch of things about the city I'm going to. So you can go on all those um, like iTunes or whatever you want to use and just look up uh, the city you're looking for. And most of the time, I'm going to give you all these travel shows uh, about it. Or maybe it's food related, maybe it's travel, maybe it's like uh, some, something else. But that way you get a little bit of prep work while you're flying, trying to stay awake. 
The last thing I do is is jump. Like at this point, it's all done. All I have to do is just sit in a chair and uh, basically just be taken to where I'm going. I, I'll, I'll tell you, when I do these long trips, this will be my, my third one of six months or more. They're usually anticlimactic by the time I've gotten to the airport. The, the part where they're really exciting is when I buy the plane ticket. But by the time I get to the airport, it's more like hurry up and wait. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna board the plane. I'm gonna have my laptop ready. I'm gonna have some books or my Kindle usually, and um, just sit. And in this case, it'll be 15 hours. In other cases, it's been longer. Uh, but to be honest, it's kind of anticlimactic, and it, it doesn't really start until when I actually land in the country. So that's the end of my liftoff sequence. Let me know if anyone has any questions about uh, steps that I take or suggestions that you may have. I'm, I'm sure I can learn a lot from all of you. Uh, but good luck and uh, happy travels. Thank you.